And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a chicken, an apple scallop, which is just basically a, base, uh, a baked chicken casserole with some stuffing. We're going to make orange glazed sweet potatoes and a very popular cookie called chocolate no-bakes or preacher cookies or oatmeal drops. It goes by many, many, many names. We're going to get started on our casserole. Now, my oven is preheated to 355 degrees, or 50 degrees, excuse me. I have a large nonstick skillet here that I'm just melting some butter with maybe a teaspoon of olive oil added to it. And I'm going to chop up one medium onion and we're going to saute that in the butter along with some celery. I don't think there's any better smell than celery and onion sauteing in butter except maybe adding a little bacon to it. We're not doing that today, but oh my goodness, I love sauteed celery and onion together. So I'm just going to add it to it as I chop. I got like a, a smallish onion here. You could use a yellow onion. I've got a white onion, but any kind of onion that you want. And I've got some celery because we're basically making a stuffing. And you know, you got to have that celery in your stuffing. So I have here four stalks of celery that we've washed. Now, when I cook stuffing at home and I make stuffing at my house, I always have to make a lot of the sauteed onion and celery because I eat a bowl of it. I always make more than what I need for the recipe because I love to saute it, then get it out in a bowl and just eat it. I love sauteed celery and onion together. This is the basis of so many stuffings. Okay, we're just going to add it to it as we go. Just a smallish dice is fine. I don't want to stand still there. Cut it, you know, into smallish pieces. And I've got some leftover uh, rotisserie chicken. You can do this with chicken that you make just for this. You can also, this is a great recipe for that leftover turkey at Thanksgiving or any other time you cook turkey. I don't, it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving for me to buy turkeys. And I'll tell you something I do every year. Now, I have a freezer at home, um, an extra, you know, the upright freezers. Well, at Thanksgiving, they always have turkey on sale. So I buy extra turkeys, and I freeze them, and so we eat it throughout the year because I really like it. And it's an economical meal because you get usually at least three meals, if not four, out of a turkey. After you eat the main dish, you could make something like this. Or you could, you know, make soups, lots of other things. All right, now I have in this bowl one box of the savory herb stuffing mix. It's all that's in there. And I've got some leftover rotisserie chicken. You can use light or dark, whatever you like. You want to kind of cut it into you know, dice it up or tear it into bite-sized pieces. You know, get all that meat off that chicken or that turkey after you eat and just keep it. You can also freeze it if you need to. A piece of the skin, I don't want that. Okay, we're just sauteing up the celery and onion. You want about two cups of chicken. The big pieces I'm going ahead and cutting into bite sizes. The others are fine probably. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
just, you know, good sized pieces. All right? We're going to add some walnuts for crunch, about half a cup. I'm going to cut these up a little bit because they are a little big. These are halves. If you've got uh, pieces, you, do, you probably don't need to cut them. If you don't want to use walnuts, you could use almonds or leave the nuts out. You could also add some dried cranberries to this dish if you wanted to. This is a great casserole dish to make, um, not only for your house, but for someone, maybe you want to take a meal to someone. This is one of those great dishes that you can take to someone. Let me stir my onions and celery. Now we just really kind of want to soften those in the butter. And I did add about a teaspoon of olive oil, but you don't have to add the olive oil if you don't want to. I've got two eggs that I'm going to um, add to my mixture. Adam, I like to, you know, now you've heard me say a thousand times, break them in a separate bowl. That's what my mama always did, that's what I do. She was right. We're gonna add a little bit of salt, maybe a teaspoon or so of salt. This is half a teaspoon measure. And some pepper, about half a teaspoon of pepper. I've got a couple of Granny Smith apples. They're pretty big, so I think I'm only going to use one. You can use any kind of apple that you want. We're going to dice it. These are, this is a pretty big apple, so I think I'm only going to need one. I like to cut it in half and then in half again and take a knife, a little small paring knife, to get that core out. Okay. All right, now we're just going to dice this up. You could chop it in your food processor if you wanted to. It's important that you have a flat surface to cut. So that's why I like to cut it in half and then in half again because you, if you're trying to cut on a round surface, you're, you could cut yourself. Onions are smelling so good. Preheat your oven again to 350 degrees. You could make this ahead of time and just pop it in the oven when you're ready to bake it. You might need to add a little bit more of your chicken broth, but you can make it ahead of time if you want to. All right, that's good. It's a lot of apple. We just need one. Okay, add that to your bowl. And then add your onion and pepper, or onion and celery mixture, along with the butter. All right, we're just going to mix this all together. Mmm, after you get, you know, some of it in there, let's just be honest, your best tools are your hands. So get your hands in there. Stir it a little bit first to get the onion mixture cooled down a little bit with the colder ingredients. Stir it with your hands or with a spoon to get it all incorporated. Mmm, that looks so good. Okay, and then put it in a baking dish. Press it down, doesn't that look good? And then you need probably a cup to a cup and a half, it, it really depends, of chicken broth and you wanna pour this over top. I've got about a cup and a half. Pressing it down, you want it to be moist and you're just going to pop this in an oven 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. I'm just going to take a break, clean up, pop this in the oven, and when I come back, we're going to make a delicious side dish. We're going to make some orange glazed sweet potatoes. I'll be back in just a minute.
righty, now our chicken is in the oven and we are going to make some sweet potatoes. Now, I have already peeled and diced up into like one, each, one inch pieces about two pounds of sweet potatoes and I've covered them with water and I'm just going to get that in uh, on the stove back here to just bring it to a boil and cut and cook them for about six minutes or so because they're cut small so they're going to cook very quickly. Now on this eye I have a small skillet that I am going to make the glaze okay we've got some sugar I've got some cornstarch and some salt just gonna whisk that together then I'm slowly gonna add in about a half a cup of orange juice now this happens to be fresh squeezed but if you don't have a fresh orange you can use orange juice although if you can use a fresh orange, it's better because you're going to need the zest. We're just going to let that go. It's going to come up to a boil and it's going to get thick. That cornstarch is going to make it nice and thick. We're basically making a sauce or a gravy, if you will, for these sweet potatoes. I am going to add a pinch of pepper because I like black pepper. Mmm, that smells good. Now I have here uh, about a tablespoon or so of the zest of one orange and I've got here some walnuts, just a few little walnuts because I like to add a little bit of a crunch. If you want to use almonds again, you can. It does add a, a, you know, everything in this dish is soft and this will add a little bit of a crunch. You want to bring that mixture up to a boil or a simmer. It's getting there. We're getting there. Chopping these up. You don't want them too fine. Okay. Stir that together. Come on you. Let's come up to a little bit of a simmer. I'm trying to get used to this. I here. Our new set is coming along. We'll be in our permanent set hopefully soon. We are in a temporary location. I had someone ask me a couple days ago um, about, you know, we, we, this is our temporary set. See how that has come up to a vigorous boil? That's going to thicken thanks to the cornstarch and become almost syrupy. We want to cook this for about two minutes. You do need to keep an eye on it though, because it will boil over if you don't. So ever so often, go in with your whisk. Oh, that smells so good. You smell that orange. That was a good orange. Gotta tell you, it was very juicy and very sweet. Because we ate one. We had two, we only needed the juice of one and a half and we ate the other half. And it was really good. I guess if I had to pick a favorite fruit, citrus fruit category would be my favorite. I love citrus anything. If you've watched the show for any length of time, you know that. I love the flavor of lemon and the flavor of lime and orange. It just adds a brightness to your food. Now, I'm going to add that zest because that is a lot of flavor. I'm also going to add a little bit of butter. And I like unsalted butter. The butter will add a, a richness to it. Now, you just want to turn this down to simmer. You can see how it has sort of thickened up and become more viscous. It's just a thicker mixture. I'm not going to stir in the walnuts till the very last minute. Now, I've got this down as low as this eye will go. And I'm just going to let that simmer for a couple of minutes, going in ever so often to stir while our potatoes are cooking. And then we will combine the two to serve. Okay, 
Okay, now while our sweet potatoes are coming up to a boil and cooking, we're going to make an easy, easy cookie. I have here some sugar, just regular granulated sugar, some cocoa powder, and some milk. And we're going to stir all that together until it melts. The sugar will melt. It makes like a syrup. Just stir it, whisk it with your whisk, and all that cocoa powder will dissolve. You do need to have a sheet of wax paper or parchment paper laid out. Because we'll get, these are drop, these are no bakes. You do not have to put these in the oven. They're very popular, and there's a lot of different recipes out there. Some people add cinnamon to theirs. This happens to be my husband's favorite cookie. He loves these things. I don't make them often because, you know, he'll eat them all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, all of them aren't that good for you. One or two's okay. You just want to let all that dissolve, which it is. I have here three cups of just oats. Now, I'm using the quick cooking oats. And we've got some peanut butter, a heaping third of a cup. You could use crunchy if you have it. It adds an extra layer of texture, but I did not have any crunchy peanut butter, and so I wasn't going to buy crunchy peanut butter just for this recipe. So you can use smooth, but if you wanted to add some chopped peanuts, you could. Okay, let's get this up just a little bit more dissolved. Going to add in a little bit of vanilla, about a teaspoon. Just adds that extra layer of flavor. And I always put just a pinch of salt in my baked goods or sweets, desserts. It just brings out that flavor, that sweetness. Okay? I think that's good. Now, you're going to pour this mixture over top of this mixture, scraping out all that goodness, all that chocolate, peanut butter. And the heat from this is going to instantly melt the peanut butter. And stir all that together. I need a bigger spatula here. Stir all of that together. These are the quick cook oats. You would not want to use like the steel cut oats because they um, would not soften up enough. They need time and heat. Oh, that peanut butter just smells so, so good. I like to let it set for about 30 seconds or so so that it can cool down for one a little bit, but the oats kind of hydrate just a little. Don't let it set too long because it'll harden up. But about 30 seconds is good. And then have your parchment paper or wax paper. If you don't have any either, you could, you know, anything that you want. I, I, you could use um, a sheet tray. Just make sure you spray it with some kind of a nonstick spray, which just for good measure, I'm going to do on here. All right. You can use an ice cream scoop or you could use anything you wanted. I'm actually just going to use a couple of spoons. Stir all that together. Oh, if you could smell this. It smells so good. And what you want to do is just take a spoonful and drop it onto your wax paper. And they will harden. As they cool, they need to cool for a few minutes. You can pop them in the refrigerator if you want. And they're just easy. Some people call these preacher cookies. I don't know how that name got started. If you know how that started, let us know. I'm curious how that got the name preacher cookies. But maybe because on Sunday afternoon, when preacher came to eat lunch with you after church, you whipped up a cookie. I really don't know. I just made that up. But uh, I'd be curious why they're called preacher cookies. If you know, 
Um, I know them as chocolate no bakes or chocolate oat no bakes. They're easy to do and they are very, very good. And you really could mix this up a multitude of ways. You can make them as big or as small as you want. Um, you could add some cinnamon. You could add some pumpkin pie spice or the warm, you know, nutmeg. You could add some nuts. You could add some dried cherries or dried cranberries, the little craisins. I love those things. You could add any kind of a nut to it. If you wanted to add some uh, sunflower seeds or even chia seeds would be good in this. You really can add anything you want. The basis is chocolate, oatmeal, and peanut butter. You could make it with almond butter or cashew butter. But I mean, they couldn't be simpler. They really could not be simpler. You saw me do this just start to finish. Now, anybody could make these. This would be a great recipe to make with your kids in the kitchen. Let me use my scraper to get that last little bit to make one more cookie. And you don't even have to turn on your oven. And it's good, so good. Let's find a spot. Looks like a good little spot. They're not gonna spread out anymore. I mean, they're just gonna harden. You can pop them in the refrigerator if you want to. But there you go, a simple, easy, delicious recipe for no-bake cookies. Okay, now our sweet potatoes are tender, and as you can see, our delicious glaze has come together. It really just thickens up so nice with that cornstarch. Get all of that out of there. And you just want to gently glaze those sweet potatoes with that orange sauce. Mm. Remember the walnuts that we chopped up? Can't forget those. I'm going to save a few for the top. Stir those in there to combine. And that's it. This would make a delicious and beautiful addition to your Thanksgiving table, as well as any other day of the week. Okay, just put them in our serving dish. Casserole's almost done. And we're gonna make a quick and easy creamed corn to go alongside this. Let's get our pans out of the way and sprinkle just the remaining few little nuts on there. The nuts add flavor, but they also add a lot of texture. So there you go, a quick and easy orange glazed uh, sweet potato that's really good. This is our wonderful apple chicken scallop. We use just leftover rotisserie chicken, or you could roast chicken if you wanted. You could poach some chicken. You could use white meat or dark meat or any combination thereof. Saute some uh, onion and celery together in butter, and I added just a little tiny bit of olive oil. Saute those. One box of, I'm using the herb mixture stuffing mix, but you could use the chicken, the turkey, the cornbread, any kind that you like. Or if you don't have the stuffing mix, but you've got some leftover bread, let the bread cubes, either bake them in the oven until they're harder and a little more crunchy, or leave them out overnight and cube them, whatever you wanted to do. I just find it easy to use the stuffing mix that has the spices in it already. And I've got a, an apple. I've got, I used Granny Smith, but you could use whatever you wanted. Get all that in there, salt and pepper. Stir that all together. Bake it 
for about 30 minutes in a 350 degree oven with just enough chicken broth to make it moist. And it just comes out delicious and easy. We have here our wonderful uh, orange glazed sweet potatoes. We used fresh sweet potatoes and we cubed them, we boiled them, peeled them and cubed them and boiled them. We made a glaze out of orange juice and orange zest, some uh, cornstarch and just some wonderful flavors in there. You could also add a touch of cinnamon to that if you wanted to. Here are just some easy, easy recipes for you to try. Now, we can't forget the star of the show. We've got our cookies that I popped into the refrigerator just so they could cool down just a little bit. Let me make some room here. Let's get our cookies out of the refrigerator. You don't have to refrigerate them. But I wanted to so that they could set up a little quicker for you. But these are our delicious no-bake cookies that we made. They need to set up just a little bit more, but they're fine. We made them out of oatmeal, we, and we added some peanut butter. I used smooth peanut butter because I didn't have any crunchy peanut butter, but if you have crunchy peanut butter, it's even better. It adds another layer of texture, but I just did not have any crunchy. All I had was smooth, and that's fine. We added some unsweet cocoa powder. You could use the dark, there's a dark chocolate cocoa powder that you could use. That would be fine too. Any kind of just chocolate, you could also um, uh, grate in some chocolate chips or chocolate bar and, or add some chocolate chips to this mixture if you wanted to. You really could mix this one up a thousand different ways. You, these are absolutely delicious with some dried cranberries, you know, the sweetened craisins. They are so good with those chopped up a little bit and added to them and then just let it set up just like we did. Just mix it all together, drop it on wax paper or parchment paper, either one, and they're delicious. So they are a very easy, quick cookie to make. You do not even have to turn on your oven. This is a great, great recipe to make with kids. You know, kid, it's important that you get those children in the kitchen with you when they're small. Let them help you do this. This is a great way to start them out. Let them measure the ingredients and stir it all together and, you know, spoon it out onto the pan. Now, you probably need to be the one heating up and melting the sugar and all of that together, the cocoa powder and the vanilla, but then let them help you. Great way to get your kids started out in the kitchen. So here are some quick, easy recipes for you to make. This one you could make with leftover Thanksgiving turkey. Great dish to make for someone to take to them. Maybe you want to take a meal to a potluck dinner or someone that's not feeling well or an, whoever. It, it doesn't matter. Maybe someone just had a baby. They're going to love this dish. These are all easy, portable dishes for you to take with you on your busy, busy life, and you can make them any day of the week. Thank you for joining with me, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna.